So today there are 23 new community cases to report, all in the Auckland region. It takes our total number associated with this outbreak to 1,108, and pleasingly, 835 of those cases have now recovered. Additionally, there is one new case in a managed isolation facility who is a recent returnee. Now, of today's 23 new cases, 22 are considered epidemiologically linked at this point. 11 of those are household contacts, including six within one household. Uh, five are known close contacts, while a further one is likely a close contact. Investigations and interviews continue with the remaining person who is being reported today. Yesterday's one unlinked case also remains under investigation today, and today there are 13 people in hospital with two of those in intensive care. Great turnout at testing centres across Tāmaki Makoto yesterday with 9,780 swabs taken. Uh, that's sitting above their seven-day average of 8,441. Now, based on the high level of testing and those negative results in that upper Hauraki region or area, uh, it, is now, it has also now moved to alert level three, along with the rest of Auckland, and is covered by the relevant COVID-19 public health resp uh, response alert level order that is in place for that full uh, Auckland area. So the residents in Upper Hauraki must adhere to the usual level three restrictions, and the key one there is stay home as much as possible, don't expand your bubble at this point, uh, and just go out and about uh, just when you need to. A reminder also that the Section 70 order uh, applies to people who were in the Upper Hauraki area between the 8th and the 20th of September and who left the area before 7.30pm on the 20th. So that includes people who were living in the area at the time, working there or who may have visited the area. They, those covered by that notice must remain in isolation by themselves and should monitor for symptoms. If they become symptomatic, of course, seek a test. In addition, if any persons have attended a specific location of interest that is identified and listed on our Ministry of Health website, they will be required to test and will have uh, further specific self-isolation requirements. You can leave your place of uh, residence if you are covered by a Section 70 notice to access a health service uh, to get a COVID-19 vaccine, and I'd encourage you to do that, or for any other reason necessary to preserve your own or another person's safety or life. On uh, boundary exemptions, just an update there. Personal travel across the Alert Level 3 and 2 boundary is still highly restricted, and the threshold for an exemption remains very high. We still need to contain the virus uh, within Auckland. However, in addition to the new exemptions announced yesterday, there is now also the ability to apply for an exemption for people who want to cross the alert level boundary one way into Auckland to provide support or care to a person or childcare where the parents or guardians are returning to work now that it's moved into alert level three. There are strict conditions that apply, no one, uh, that no one else is available locally who can carry out that function, that the person crossing the boundary needs to travel there and stay until the region moves to alert level two, and there must be suitable evidence provided to support the need to travel. There is a high number of applications presently, so people should apply as soon as possible, as very short time frames cannot always be accommodated. Uh, just on the vaccine rollout, the WHO continues to warn about uh, the infodemic, that is the glut of information, some accurate and much of it inaccurate, and it spreads uh, like the pandemic, like the virus. Uh, in particular, false information, of course, can be harmful, mostly because it creates uncertainty and that can then express itself in hesitancy to adopt public health measures or indeed to be vaccinated. Key thing I'd just like to encourage people to do, particularly those who are in positions of uh, responsibility or influence, is to point people towards information sources that are reliable and accurate. And those include the Unite Against COVID-19 and Ministry of Health websites, the Kara Fiora and Ministry for Pacific Peoples websites, and your local DHB or health provider. And finally, Aucklanders, thank you very much for your ongoing work. Alert Level 3 still requires uh, very tight restrictions. Uh, of course, you can enjoy getting out for takeaways, coffee or other things, but please stay at home as much as possible. Get tested if you are unwell. 
wear a mask if you're going out and about, and of course, if you haven't already, please do get vaccinated. So to run through a few key numbers from the vaccination programme, 53,000 doses were administered across the country yesterday, 21,000 of those were in Auckland. That means that nationwide, three quarters of the eligible population, aged 12 plus, have now received their first dose, and 40% have received their second dose and are fully vaccinated. To bore into those numbers a little bit further, 52% of Māori have had their first dose, with 26% getting their second. Pacific people, uh, the vaccination rates are slightly better, 67% have had their first dose, and 36% their second. In terms of our over 65 population, 91% have received at least their first dose, and 79% their second. For those aged between 40 and 64, 80% have had their first dose and 44% their second. Those numbers are encouraging, but they do show that we continue to have an equity challenge that we need to work on. There's a lot more work to do. Across Auckland, 1,753,105 doses have been administered so far. 1,144,713 of those are first doses. That's what got us to the 80% mark. Uh, and 608,000 people in Auckland have received both doses, meaning they're fully vaccinated. So I now want to talk a bit about vaccination of our health workforce. We've been looking closely uh, at what we need to do to ensure that our frontline health workers are kept protected from COVID-19. Because of the nature of their jobs, they are at greater risk of being exposed to and infected by COVID-19, and they can transmit the disease to others. Vaccination rates across our frontline health workers are pretty good. DHB frontline healthcare workers were offered early vaccination, early access to the vaccination, as part of Group 2 earlier in the year. At last count, at least 75% of the total DHB workforce of around 80,000 uh, have been fully vaccinated, with the numbers even higher if we just take into account first doses. Those figures include both the clinical and the non-clinical staff working at our DHBs, and that was at last count, so those numbers are likely to be uh, even higher now. But despite that good progress, uh, there, are other part, there are some parts of the sector that need to push further to support their workers to be vaccinated. In short, we need vaccination rates to be very high across this particular workforce. Many other countries have required healthcare workers to be vaccinated. These include Australia, the US, Singapore, Canada, UK, France, Italy, Greece and Fiji. And we are considering doing the same here in New Zealand. So I've asked the Ministry of Health to consult with key stakeholders on a proposal that would require the majority of healthcare workers to be vaccinated against COVID-19. This would apply to staff working in roles with a COVID-19 pathway that includes emergency departments, those in primary care, those in settings with vulnerable patients, and it would include people working in aged residential care facilities, uh, critical support services, including medical laboratories and catering facilities, uh, and those providing home and community care services that would require them all to be vaccinated. Turning to MIQ, I can confirm today that the next MIQ room release through the virtual lobby will take place on Tuesday the 28th of September at 6pm New Zealand time. The lobby will open at 5pm New Zealand time, one hour before the room release begins. Uh, there's no need to get onto the website any earlier than that. As long as you are there between 5pm and 6pm, you will get an equal chance to secure a room. This release will be for around three, or approximately 3,000 rooms across October, November and December. And I do want to remind people, as I've said previously, uh, we're not releasing all of the rooms at once, so there will be more releases after this one. Uh, the MIQ website will be updated in the next couple of days with more information uh, following the feedback we've received from Monday's release. So finally now to those who are in Auckland who have been doing it tough, particularly our senior secondary school students. I want to recognise that the extended time that students in Auckland have been spending at alert levels two and three will have had an impact on their studies. I'm increasing the entitlement that Auckland students will get to learning recognition credits for the NCEA as a result of that. They'll now be able to get one learning recognition credit for every four credits that they achieve through their assessments in this school year, up to a cap of 16 credits for NCEA Level 1 and 12 for NCEA Levels 2 and 3. I'm also further adjusting the threshold for certificate endorsement to 44 credits at merit or excellence level, rather than the 46, uh, 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 the 46 threshold that will apply to students in other parts of the country. 
These changes basically bring the support available to Auckland students into line with the support they received in 2020 following their second lockdown. I hope this will provide a reassurance to those students that their qualifications and the awards that go with those remain within their reach despite the disturbance that they've experienced this year. And I want to end by thanking our schools, our teachers and our whānau in Auckland for the work that they've done to continue to support the students right the way through lockdowns and right the way through a very disrupted year. I know that a lot of effort has gone in there and I want to acknowledge them and thank them for that.